Zambia is proud to host the 15th OIC Summit on the 4th and 5th May 2024, the second largest gathering of world leaders, kings, presidents, rulers, prime ministers, along with delegates from 57 member countries of the Organization of Islamic Cooperation, will gather in our beloved nation for this historic event. The theme of the summit is enhancing unity and solidarity through dialogue for sustainable development. It's a platform to foster cooperation, promote peace and drive sustainable development across the Ummah and the world at large. We call on all Gambians to unite and support the government as it strives to host a memorable and successful event. Let's showcase our hospitality, culture and the beauty of the Gambia to the world. Join us in making history. Let's stand together, united as one, to ensure the 15th OIC Summit in the Gambia is an event to remember. Together, we can make a difference. Bari <laughs> Baluo. Anim Islamic microfinance is becoming an increasingly popular mechanism for poverty alleviation, especially for developing countries around the world. This microfinance service adheres to the principles of Islam as a form of social responsibility. Yona Islamic microfinance is the Islamic microfinance of choice in the Gambia, trustworthy and reliable. At Yona Islamic microfinance, we provide savings products, current accounts, financing products in conformity with Islam. In addition, Yona Islamic Microfinance also offers local and international remittances, takaful fund, management of zakat, management of awqaf, trading and investment, and building of strategic partnerships to bring financial services to the doorstep of the poor with donor projects, madrasas, youth organizations, women groups, and farmer organizations. Make a choice with Yona Islamic Microfinance today. For more information on Yona Islamic Microfinance, call 377-2151 or 9832-151 or visit Yona Head Office at Tipa Garage, Bakote or visit any Yona branch located countrywide near you. I have the singular honor and privilege to give the introductory remarks of this very important event, the third edition of the public lecture in honor of Solo Sunday, the principal man and others. The party leader and the principal presenter, the person supposed to give the permit me to recollect few incidents that occur that led to this unfortunate event as we commemorate the last of Sunday and call the, that is the April 14. Barely two weeks after the National Congress of the United Democratic Party 2016, as we returned from Basse, 
when Solo was newly elected as the organizing secretary of United Democratic Party. The position that was held by single Nyas as he graduated from the youth wing, from the youth secretary general, he was elected as the organizing secretary of the party, very determined to contribute immensely for the change that he oversees since the Congress. I can recollect vividly the two words of Solo. Any youth gathering very determined and committed to the cause to ensure that there will be change 2016. To an extent, he would say, even whereas I will be the sacrificial lamb of the Gambia. They are not the king. Then, what that we are was of Solo Sadi. On this basis, he led a group of people. I will say the members of the United Democratic Party, precisely those from the Ukraine at that time, who they want for electoral reform. They believe that request can only be made by demonstrating so that the authorities could listen and hear. Perhaps in a true democratic dispensation, that could be the approach, unfortunately. That was not the case then, and therefore he was not listened to. On that fateful day, about 25 of them were arrested, including Solon. The following the United Democratic Party convened a meeting to discuss about the modality of how to ensure the release of the detained UDP members. After the executive meeting on the matter, in the evening, the sad news came that Solo was tortured to death. The party could not wait for a planned demonstration. This was on Friday, the coming Monday, when the news of Solo allegedly tortured to death was received. As we come back the following day, instead of a press conference, yes, indeed, there was press conference, but the press conference turned to to continue with a demonstration. Instead of waiting for Monday, the party leader and the executive member decided to waste no time to demand for the release of Solo Sunday, dead or alive. That was a very hard decision for the party to take. And where all the executive members were supposed to be involved, I only believe that was well calculated by the leadership. Instead of the entire executive to partake, it was limited to only the senior members, all the deputies to stay. In the event, anything happened to the senior members, the deputies can take over the affairs of the party. I can recall that this was not a welcoming move for myself. I protested, but the party leader insisted that that was handpoint. There the senior ones would go, and we the junior ones had to stay to take charge of the party.
in the event anything happened to them. The end result was not positive as well. Party leader and 19 others were arrested who were not being. 13 others who were arrested were later granted police bail, but the party leader 19 others were not granted any police bail. That was April 16th. UDP members remain very defiant and determined to call for justice at every corner of the country precisely before the courthouse where these detainees were parading from time to time. All these court sittings were never held without the presence of the UDP supporters to show our solidarity and support to our detained party members. <laughs> Madam just Speaker, that they that could be remembered that very well in this struggle was May 9th. May 9th, the members were very determined to still continue pursuing, for singing the song, release Solo Sandeng and Korn, release Usainu Davo and Korn. Going to be very determined. I remember this very day, before the very day itself. We had to organize ourselves in the way that our voices can be heard very well in a revolutionary style. And this resulted to one of our Kanyelam women to compose a song. in the passing of Mbakachan Jawara. We informed them, if you go to the corn house, we want you to demonstrate yourself in a manner that can leave impact and then cannot come. Mbakachan said, The song composed for Solo Sunday. Release Solo Sunday and Co. Release Fatumata Jaura and Co. Release Njogonjai and Co. Release Fatu Kamara. This was a very touching song. I'm not very good in singing. But I believe some members can recall this song. Solo Sandem Beda Wada Ala Bondi. Aina Solo Sandem Beda Wada Ala Bondi. Nyogonjai Surwa Beda Wada Ala Bondi. Fatu Kamara Beda Wada Ala Bondi. Na Solo Sandem Beda Wada Ala Bondi. This was a very song. This ignited the militants to be very defiant and committed to the solidarity cause. After the court session, they could not get vehicle to travel down to Carnifing. They were, give, they were given leave to come down by a truck. Unfortunately, the truck could not proceed to Westfield. And they came down around West, uh, uh, Jeswan. From Jeswan to Westfield, that was where they were intercepted by the paramilitary. The brutality started from that point 
up to pipeline, the party leader's residence. At the end, about 45 of them were arrested. I think I should definitely give the news on those who were arrested on that first bulletin. Some of them not in the street or in the residence of the party leader. They had to, the security forces had to find their way to the residents and arrest whoever they can lay their hands on. Maurizar was the team leader that was arrested on May 9th. Mustafa Sisse, Mursar from Banjol, Mustafa Sisse from Talenting, Sukai Dahaba from Bakote, Jere Fati Lynch, and Shukai also later from Talindil Gerefati. You want to call him Madiana, Shunkar Ture, Madiana, Kambiro Suane, Madiana, Momorinjai, Madiana, Serif Kinke, Madiana, Lamin Damfa, Madiana, Kadi Samate, the mother of baby Aisha, to Jering. Tom Wangai Gifaron, Fadmara Turem Tugering, Boya Sedi, Yani Doran, Shrif Job Bateling Chiam Bateling, Abdul Chate Birkama, Ami Bayon Tugering, Ndeju Burford, Barbara Thomas Burford, Shripo Suno, the late Sinju Alagi, Bakar Cham Kundoing Numukunda, also late. Bakar Jami Melingara, Solo Kuruman, Sando, Late Dasilamin, Filinding Bojang Urfun, John Kunja Ben, Nyani Bakadagi, Sanyo Sisem, Solo, Malan Sado, Mandinarin, Musa Marum, Maria Makunda, Babanding Yabo, also Late Chiam Bamako, Elsa Dalfa, Mandinarin, Sanyo Sibaran, Yunje Swad, Balanding Jod, Talinding, Bakar Marong, Birkama Matina, Chemo Ture, Birkama Matina, Bakar Maris also named, Kausun Bengan, Banjul, Sukai Swane, Jifarum, We Mas Birkama, Nyaga Kurubani, Sanchaba Tuba, Umar Sonko, Bakotin, Bemba Jaune, Nyani Kunting, Alaji Sedi Khan, Jara Singh Kunda, residing in Bakau, Dani Ibrahim Acheta, Kanet in South, Lamin Sin, Lamin Marinkong, and Lamin Singhatin, all from Bakau, 45 of them. This was the most brutal day as far as this April 14, 16, and May 9 are concerned that day we shall never forget how our militants were brutalized from Westfield towards pipeline, in particularly the residence of the party leader. Madam Just Speaker, Solo and Co had gone, their legacy will remain forever. I did say at our morning session at the end of the March pass, what contributed immensely towards the change in 2016, one would say is or was as a result of Solo Sanding and Co, who went out to protest for electoral reform. If there could be catalyst to the change, indeed, this was the very catalyst as far as the change that we got in 2016 is concerned. And I added, perhaps we leave that to history. 
if Gambia can be proud of the democratic change that we have, we can celebrate the, the democratic dispensation that we have, and yet uh, we could not give recognition for this very important move. We leave that to history to decide. But I hope one day history will decide that accordingly. As history had decided events of this nature in South Africa, still because effort had been recognized by ANC and South Africa. To me, solo Sunday is still Biko of the Gambia. I look forward to the history when this event will be recognized, when the effort and the struggle of solo Sunday will be recognized by the Gambia. This is not about history. As the change in about UDP, as the change in 2016 was not about UDP. And therefore, the contribution of Solo and Co cannot be related to UDP. I look forward to a mind that can foresee that one day and give what Solo and Co deserve. On that note, I thank you all. Elijah, thank you very much for the reminders. And uh, we are grateful that we live today uh, and we see our party leader in serenity, in peace. But on that uh, fateful day, uh, his remarks are ringing through the echoes of history. I remember him saying that if the first bullet is to be fired, may it hit me. Some of us have never had sacrifice on that scale. So it's uh, useful that these reminders are made, not uh, to brag, but to remind people that this struggle is not a one-day struggle. Very soon, we will be observing 30 years of the coming of Yaya Jame to power. He came in 1994. We are in 2024. The destruction he has done to the fabric of this country, we are still recovering from it. The victims who perish on that fateful day, uh, their families are still with us. One of the victims, Alaji Falan Sonko, Chairman KMC, is our next uh, speaker. Alaji Falan, you have the floor. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. Eh, Bifanamu lungo doleti lungo koda. Bao. April 14. Eh, nimme nu yeko dati wole Ibrahim Asolo Sandenti. Mbe dua lae, alma arjana kalanke o dalae. Ana nyongol be. Nga mira ninko mbe be tofola abe kole ala bulubaki. Bari Ibrahim Ajanko Sise. Menketa dinni mati nkono wolo. Eh, ala koye mira baki. Katu kabri ya mbesa mba kili nkili ya nilipa fombe sayani mbalu o tema. Nata ngatra nyinke se fula. Nte tafele. Bara afana nyinke se fula le katitaye. Kili wawo tombong. Akonyo ka afele mbulu. Akumbota le fula bonkai. Ibrahim ankai na mkai barike ya nte nyintifana. Ala mutadro yye dey. Akonyo barimbe nyinke so wawo mabola le. Wote fila wawake la evidence le. Walung alhamdulillah bile ase nka wawo diata. Bar wolum fana mu lundol te lungol kono. Ala na atake, ate sato man na siya. Dindi mere mamira hana fututa fang. On hana fututa mamira di mba soto. Yene emira di le la marom fana ala. Akonye konte te balu la mbe fala ni. Nung ala yake ole gama. Amanita mbi karifula la fana atata. 
e auto bi lugo akole atam bulu bak bari alhamdulillah rabbil alamin mba trailer bawo ni emira meyen ni okuya ko ko no bak nga wuli men kamma nga ke men kamma wole wole ma ni kuya ni o ala kulli halin fo ni o eta nun ibrahima e men fonye ya fo jani akonye ko nyinan hanin telebe kala sadati bari nin ala sonda ya jamme bitale nun aka munta ko ala ya ke wole nyama aya fo nyamen aketa wole nyama bari alhamdulillah rabbil alamin bari wo kola mune natake wolemu nyinin kar kodi to nya to nya gambia e abala fa warta isafu ko be danko le kono nun aka mulun wole fe bawo kelo keta niol tuta bar niol bota men kamma to nya to nya hani killing amanke je ngamuru ko male bar mukata nya to wolema bala fat woto bi ko ngamira ninte be mira la nyine kante ni oto ra most katun kole ko ka gambia ke dula nyon tawdi bar sanyi nin na ta man gambia ke no dula nyon tawdi fo gambia ka muru ko matulo tili ni wulte sin ni ko ya ko mon bal wala kole ate fola bar saya ye kari fa janale inya pita kari kan janale mbela dimbal bi mbe bulo ben kunto sira ma fe jaw mbe banko kan be bulo ben kunto jumale kanata bi dimbati o abala fa warata asuno warata walat na kabrin deputy pati leader kumbo ta jana ayen ni ko ya ba katuko ako gambian kolu al hekatun dun dal kasi dale bari to nya to nya to nya to nya ya wuli men kama o ketale ya wuli men kama wole membe janga e boja ndung ala ye ma ko le o ketale woto wallahi teman kuke jam fan tungo le kuke drom bari teman kuke wala na aliman betan kala jam fama jam fama beta aliman betan kala jam fama bar gambia ngolo alingan teo city na keto na kelo kuta kuta yandi fonsi gambia bondi abe men kono banko be tunen kan be nga wolone bari e alhamdulillah rabbil alamin kelo nyanta kuta kuta yalale kelo nyanta kuta kuta yalale ni ngam mira tala solo sande na dimbaya ye je bi ya mamari ngol jibe ya dindi ngol jibe dindi kononto ala nyali mba man tambi kare fulo la kabri ba fala hanna asi ate tamilala ibaluta wole kono woni kuya anani toro menyante nyaji o fitala o fanke kumbon ke wodi metal ntol menno baluta ke ta nyaonya ntol laddi mbal kanjele ni wulta ngata kata le ninga domandi ngome soto ngasa men na boro mome ya lonko amang la dimba na man ke yudi pin kolt wolel ke bul fay nyokan i batata ye ko beke ya la korda loye fo ya dundi ye wodo yudi pi ala baraka yudi pin kolo ala baraka nte si wolef ale ka tu ngal lodu la jele ala baraka woto be mo be tentu la be mo be jey la bi dia moti siano la ba woto nya to nya to nya nga mira ngam fanne ba mani drom ba defini le ni won tente dia mo ke no la salamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi taala ha won gambia ya la arlen be isilen be bes bu melni tay wa njoboti solo sandeng eh ñun wa udp saka parti leader bi duñ nangu ñu tumaranke fi nda ya jaame def len bugona def ay baye def len ay tumaranke waye lolu yalla def na lolu du muna am ñu ngi sante yalla ci lolu di gërem pati UDP di gërem pati leader bi ak kep ku nek dom UDP taxaw won family bi legi ki wara wax ci turi family solo sandeng bi moy domam mohammed sandeng fokna mom jarul sax ma introduce ko waye mom mo wara wax legi the award last year that was um, given on behalf of the whole party in honoring um, the legacy and the sacrifice exactly as it was written um, for your contributions to the UDP. And I must say that um, is actually indeed quite an honor for me and my siblings. We thank you for that. Um, without doing much, I would just um, read a statement. This is a joint statement that was, um, that was put out this morning by the Solo Sending Foundation. As you know, um, the Solo Sending Foundation was formulated in 20. 17 to continue to propagate the legacy of solo sending just like we're doing today and uh, we were joined by the rest of um, civil society a good um, number of civil society organizations um, to put out a statement in solidarity of um, 
in solidarity for the April 14th and 16 um, victims, as well as um, all other victims. And it reads, as we mark the eighth anniversary of the April 14th, 2016, and April 16th, 2016 peaceful demonstrations, we reflect not only on the events of those historic days, but also on the journey of democracy and political progress that has unfolded since then. The past eight years have seen significant milestones achieved, symbolizing the resilience and commitment of the society to the principles of democracy and justice. Since the events of April 14th and 16, 2016, our nation has made strides in enhancing democratic processes and institutions. We have witnessed the expansion of civil liberties, the strengthening of electoral processes, and the empowerment of marginalized communities. These achievements stand as testament to the collective objective of citizens, civil society, and government bodies in advancing our democratic ideals. As organizations dedicated to upholding democratic values and promoting civic engagement, we reaffirm our commitment to playing our part in further consolidating the gains achieved thus far. We also recognize the importance of active participatory participation in the democratic process, and we remain steadfast in our efforts to foster an inclusive and participatory society, especially in the context of the transition. For Solar Sending, his family and relatives have no regret that their beloved paid the sacrificial price. We believe this is a cause worthy of the life of a patriot and the life of an astute devotee to democratic principles. We believe that eight years on, Solo the Tiger today looks down on his beloved motherland with hope for a brighter future. However, we also, as we commemorate this anniversary, it is imperative that we also reflect on the challenges that persist. One such challenge is the restrictive legal framework surrounding public assembly, which under, undermines the fundamental rights to peaceful protests and also peaceful um, expressions. We call for a constructive dialogue and a transparent process that would aim at modifying such laws and to ensure they align with international human rights standards and uphold the principles of freedom of expression and of assembly. Therefore, furthermore, we acknowledge the ongoing transitional justice process in the country aimed at addressing past human rights violations and ensuring accountability for perpetrators. While progress has been made in this end, we must continue to prioritize the rights of victims and that of survivors. We reaffirm our call for reparations for victims, particularly for those who are sick or in need of assistance. It is our collective responsibility to ensure that justice is served and that the, war, the wounds of the past are healed through meaningful reparative measures. Thus, all effort must be made to achieve this mammoth task. Towards achieving reconciliation and national healing, there should exist a period where citizens acknowledge the collective trauma we experience as a nation, relinquish all limiting views and considerations to propagate the national good. As we look towards the future, we urge fellow citizens and leaders to remain committed to the values of democracy, justice, and reconciliation. Let us continue to strive for a society where the rights and dignity of every individual are respected and protected. Together, we can build a brighter future and an inclusive one for all. I thank you all for your kind attention. These members of the United Democratic Party. Um, uh, I'm here in my capacity, not only in my capacity as chairman of the Victim Center, but definitely as a Gambian who owes a lot of gratitude to Solo Sunday for the changes that we have, we have witnessed since 2016. Um, certainly, in any other country, this should have been a national event, not only an event for the GDP. Because when Soro and his colleagues came out um, on, the, on, the, on that fateful uh, April 14, in 2016, they were not coming out as members of the UDP, but they came out on behalf of the whole country. In fact, it is thanks to you know, their demonstration that we witnessed uh, changes in 2016. 
I have absolutely no doubt that if they had not come out on that fateful day, honestly, we, the IAJM would have still been in this country. It was that coming out. It was that coming out that actually triggered, triggered the events that led to the changes in 2016. So we should be grateful to Solo and all his colleagues that came out on that fateful day. And um, uh, it is honestly hard to uh, understand why, I mean, the, the authorities have not taken the Solo Sunday and his uh, people this particular day very seriously. As I say, it should have been a national event, not a, 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 party, a partisan event, absolutely. And um, I also tend to agree with uh, a suggestion I had uh, Pastor Samba Jao of the United States made the last time on um, coffee time uh, on West Coast that um, the, um, uh, the, the Westfield Junction or the Westfield Roundabout should, should be renamed uh, Solo Sunday Square because, you know, everything started on that, uh, on that particular spot. And I think, you know, I mean, we should, uh, as, a, as a country, we should acknowledge those who actually have, I mean, uh, done a lot of uh, good things for this country. And people like uh, Solo and his colleagues definitely did quite a lot. As I said, I mean, if they had not come out on that particular day, honestly, Yaya would have still been with us. With absolutely no doubt about that. So um, I wish to urge the, the government and the government authorities to actually take these events very, very seriously. Because, I mean, uh, they are in authority, they are in power today, thanks to what happened on that fateful day. And um, uh, as I say, it is, it's important for us to um, take the, understand the events as they unfolded. You know, I mean, um, the, 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 the Gambia owes a lot of gratitude to these people, to Solo and, the, and those who came out on that particular day. And the subsequent demonstration that took place, I mean, by the leadership of the UDP also. I mean, we all know that these events, you know, this sequence of events led to what we are enjoying today, the freedom that we are enjoying today. So we have absolutely no doubt that um, uh, we need, as a nation, to honor these uh, uh, patriots who came out on that particular day and did what they did, which actually led to what we are enjoying today. On this uh, brief note, I wish to thank you very much for your attention. And, uh, salutations to my comrades and the struggle to gain not only political freedom, but also economic freedom for the Gambia. Salutations to Mr. Demba Ali Jao, my former colleague in the cabinet. I was in touch with Mr. Jao at a distance when he used to contribute to the articles in the newspapers. I read him, I felt him, but I deeply felt him when we served in the same cabinet. And uh, he left a great impact on me as a man of great honor, a great patriot, one who never compromises principles for the good of the nation. <laughs> Mr. Jao, I am singularly honored and privileged to share this high table with you. It's an immense honor to me. Uh, today is the third Solo Sunday Memorial Lecture for an event that took place eight years ago. We have really uh, delineated this event to Solo Sunday. But it was not only Solo Sunday. It is for the, all those who have sacrificed over the years for the good of this country in order to rid this country of undemocratic rule, to usher in the rule of law and responsible governance all those who sacrifice one way or the other. I see Mr. Jao said that he is here not, all, not as, only as chairman of the Victim Center, but also as one who has an immense respect for Solo Sunday. But uh, I don't think I'll be wrong to say that in fact, Mr. Jao 
as chairman of the victim center, I think you have also been a victim. You lived in exile, and that is certainly an incidence of being a victim. A lot of things happened in your family, and you wished you were there, but you couldn't. And certainly, you qualify as, in my view, you qualify as one of the victims. So I said, the event, we just circumscribed and delineated to Solo Sunday, but it covers everyone. But I also want to really concentrate more on Solo Sunday, because April 14, 2016, was not the only time that Solo Sunday went out in a very sacrificial I mean, uh, uh, undertakings for the party. I recall the Chamoy Bridge incident. He was in the midst of it. He, like many others, were herded like animals, put on board trucks, under the rain, escorted in the, with the greatest I mean, humiliation, with the greatest degrading human treatment to the police headquarters in Banjul. I recall Solo Sanden, I see him on top of the Gele Gele in the first Njaga Choi. When he jumped out from the top of the Gele Gele and started pulling down mattresses for bedding for a period of at least four days. I remember Solo Sanden when he went into his bakery to bake bread to raise funds of about $3,000 in order to fund the UDP's rally at Piram. I recollect that Solo Sunday. That was the Solo Sunday who never hesitated to offer himself as a sacrificial lamb. That was the greatest offer that anyone can make for the liberation of his country. On that fateful day of the 14th April, I yelled at Solo, and that is an act I have, I have regretted the whole of my life and will continue to regret it because I do not have the means of facing Solo and say, Solo, please forgive me, Hakotu. Because that was the day IEC was out to inspect the offices. And I was jittering that if the Manjai Bureau was not open for their inspection, that would be a good cause for really, I mean, deregistering the United Democratic Party. Little did I know that Solo was there with the inspectors. Because when I asked him, where are you? He said, at Bambo. And I thought, really, he shouldn't be at Bambo. He didn't tell me how he was, he was at Bambo. And I yelled at him and said, Solo, tired of all of his oil, Jani IC Bendu register. He didn't respond. And he never responded to me. And he will never respond to me. He went out on the basis of an agreement with other people who belong to other political parties and other stakeholders on reaching Banjil Pharmacy, all others fizzled away, except Solo Sandin and his few members of the United Democratic Party, Nogonjai, Fatima Tajawara, this gentleman in Gunju, Jite, Wakar Jite, and Farlang, and a few others. But all others who had agreed with him or had agreed among themselves, all other political parties that agreed among themselves that they would be there, all of them abandoned the enterprise. Solo took the lead. And ultimately, he died. When I received the news, late Friday night, that Solo had passed away, and that orders were given for him to be buried at, at Tujere, at Tanje. I called Lamin Diva and broke the news to him. And I thought I should go to his uncle, his, 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 his cousin, Alain Mustafa Dabo, 
to also bring the news to him before I could to the family. So long as I have said on that day, he was our Steve Biko, and he continues to be our Steve Biko. He was the one who, like Steve Biko, gave up his life to a ruthless government. He, like Steve Biko, was the one who didn't care whether a family member suffered ultimately or not. For him, South Africa was more important, and so also for him, Gambia was more important. But he sacrifices. We have to abate all the wrong that were being done in the country. Our guest lecturer here was a victim. When the courts ordered for her release, when she walked out of the courthouse, they captured her son, kept him hostage, per mode. That is a way to coerce and force her out of wherever she might be. That's all the things that Solo San and others fought for. They wanted he and his colleagues, and indeed the party he belonged to, and all other parties then, what they wanted was electoral reforms. That phony registers of voters of, 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 of voters must stop. That elections must be conducted transparently. And that the electoral process, its integrity, must not be compromised. That is what he stood for. And lo, we have seen that instead of progress being made in that direction, the voter registration system has been further bastardized. How can the alcalde of Bricama confirm the birth in that base of every person who claims to be come from Bricama? How is that possible? How can a SEFO in Yamina Dankunku attest to the fact that everyone in that constituency was born in that constituency, in fact, the Gambian? That is not possible. And that is where the use or misuse, abuse of the attestations came in. When her Piles and piles of uh, 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 attestation documents kept on the IEC who could not in any way reject any of them. So Solo Sanders Solo sacrifice, his march is still in, uh, is, I mean, in, we, are, we are still looking forward to achieving it. There has not been a local reform that is needed. We need a new constitution. Nothing has been done. Since 2016, for a new constitution to come into force. If anything, all efforts have been done to subvert the ushering in of a new constitution. That is what has taken place in the past years. But should we allow Solo Sandy and others who sacrificed for the good of the country, should we allow their sacrifices to go in vain? I don't think we should. I think we have the power, the authority, and to abate that. And that we can do by asking the government to act responsibly. And government must act, must act responsibly by bringing that constitution into the National Assembly as soon as possible. When we have all the procedural steps, three months publication period, period for a friend and all those things, that document must come to the National Assembly before September this year. Publication should start now. So it will come before the National Assembly before September, and when it passes through the IEC to set a date for a referendum, and we get ourselves prepared for a new republic. That is what ought to happen. We cannot have all this food dragging. We cannot have all this fanciful international I mean, uh, consultants and international advisors coming in. No, there must be the political will from us, the Gambians, and from the leadership that a new constitution will be ushered in. We have to take the necessary step to do so. I want to appreciate the efforts of the National Assembly, together with the executive, of really enacting the law, law against torture. 
Yes, there is a good law, but we'll have the political will to enforce them. Because the definition of torture is so wide that every day people have been tortured in this country. And they should be prosecuted under that law. So I ask the government that this law should really be given life. It should not just be on the statute book in the just and just to point to them and say, yes, we have made this progress, we have made that progress, without really the efficacy of the law itself being put in use. So we congratulate the executive and the National Assembly for doing that. But we need to do more. We need to do more in our attitudes. We don't just have to pay lip services. We don't claim ourselves to be a democratic society when we do everything that is undemocratic. We don't call ourselves a law-abiding nation when we do everything that is contrary to law. Executive lawlessness is rampant. Executive lawlessness is rampant. And this we must check. There is utter disregard for law in this country. No government should pass a law and then turn out to disregard them. And that is exactly what is happening in this country. Laws are promulgated and the government honors those laws more in violation than in observance. These are the sort of things that Solon Sunday and his colleagues fought against. Because a responsible government coming in through proper electoral process will not allow these sort of things to happen. A responsible government will not allow itself to, to embark on enterprises and efforts that will be self perpetuating A good electoral law will ensure that self perpetuation is brought to an end. This is something that Solo Sandin and his colleagues so fought for. Eight years down the line, nobody has recognized, just as Mr. Jawa has said, nobody has recognized Solo Sandin's efforts at nationally. Even when we invite some other people, to offer lectures, they declined it. <laughs> and of course, we have, no, we have no choice, rather than not just, we just have to fall back on the United Democratic Party, because we wanted this, this affair to be a national affair, a non-UDP affair. And that is why we call on other people who belong to other political formations, who belong to, to NGOs and so forth, to come and offer the lectures. But when we do, and our requests are rejected politely, we have no choice but really to do it ourselves. And when we do it ourselves, people tend to think that this is a UDP affair. And this is certainly not a UDP affair, this is a Gambian affair. And uh, I would hope that next year, I would hope that next year, every, all political parties, we we'll hope that every year, next year, the government of the Gambia will participate in this day and join us, and in fact, and join the and join us in commemorating and celebrating Solo Sunday's sacrifices to the Gambian people. This, I hope, is going to be the move by the government, and I also hope that what happened on his funeral will not occur in future activities when government participates. Not very few responsible members of the government attended that occasion. And it was thought to be a UDP affair. That was not a UDP affair. That was a day of national mourning, a day of national, national burial for Solo Sunday. And let us hope that we will forget a UDP I mean, we we'll forget that this is a UDP organized event. Let us forget that this is a Solo Sunday family organized, uh, organized event. Let us we'll hope that we'll forget that this is an event organized not just by victims, but also by every Gambian. And I hope that when we do so, we will really, really give this event a truly national character. Just one thing, on the day of the event, Elijah Dabo has mentioned, that we ask that all deputies stay home, not to partake in the, in the demonstration. 
contrary to what has been peddled about, my son, Numukunda, commonly known as Papa D, just before he walked out the, of the parlor, he said, Baba, I don't think it's a good idea for all of you to go out. Ask your deputies to stay. And I did. Contrary to what other people claim. It was him who suggested to me, because for me, every one of us would have gone out. But again, uh, there are wise counsel, and I hope that uh, uh, Mohammed and others will uh, continue uh, to really uh, counsel us in some of the things that we do. It's really a question of age, but then com I mean, common sense really helps in a lot of things. I wish next year we meet again at this venue, at other venue, or another venue where the true national character of the event will be expedited. Thank you very much, my moderator. To be accorded this privilege of delivering a lecture on this very important day, which is the role of lawmakers in constitutional reform and the transitional justice process in a democratic republic. Of course, there are more than competent people to handle this topic. And that is the reason why I say it is a privilege and honor to be given this opportunity by the party leadership. Now, it is indeed a sad day for us all to be gathered here to remember the life of a fallen hero of this country in the person of the late Ibrahim Solo Sanden. As we all know, Solo stood and died for electoral, legal, and institutional reforms, and above all, a democratic Gambia. His powerful voice will forever be remembered and honored. Mr. Sanden was not an ordinary citizen but a loyal patriot whose sacrifice is recognized and admired. Today and forever tomorrow, we are more than proud of his immense contribution and invaluable sacrifices to our democracy and collective destiny. I don't want to say much about that because previous speakers have really given a detailed account of all the sacrifices that Solo made in ensuring that we enjoy what we are enjoying today. Now, it is up to all of us to bear true witness to the bravery and sacrifice that he made, and we must continue to honor him with this day by remembering that we all have a personal role to play in keeping our country democratic and progressive. These are all that he fought for. Democratic reforms and a progressive Gambia. We must therefore take responsibility in ensuring that democracy prevails and reforms undertaken for a better Gambia to honor his legacy. We pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant him and all departed souls Jannatul Firdausi. Amen. Now to the theme proper of today's lecture, which is the role of lawmakers in constitutional reform and the transitional justice process in a democratic republic. In any country, and of course, the primary role of a national assembly, that is parliament, in any country is of course to enact legislation, perform oversight, in other words, serve as a check on the executive branch, appropriate funds, as well as serve as representatives of the people. These are the core rules of any parliament. Moreover, the institution and functioning of parliament itself 
has specific importance in a reconciliation process for the following reasons. One, Parliament is the national debating chamber where different views, interests, and concerns can find expression and be steered towards solution for the common good. This is a two-way street. The people relay their wishes and opinions to their representatives who are here with us, who in turn seek to share with and explain to those they represent the outcome of parliamentary debates. As part of this interaction, parliamentarians fulfill a role as opinion leaders who can initiate and steer public debate on pressing issues and can play an effective role in the promotion of tolerance, reconciliation, and peace. Of course, all of this may not be realistic in the early aftermath of a dictatorship like ours in the Gambia. In such cases, parliament may not be effective or if one is still in place, it may seriously weaken and limited in the capacity to respond to the challenges of reconciliation like ours in 2017. We'll all remember the period December 2016 after the elections to April 2017 specifically. Ensuring the presence of an effective parliament is clearly a challenge in most, if not all, trans transitions and highly relevant to any reconciliation process. In this regard, making parliament into a national platform for a free and open exchange of views is an important sign that reconciliation is on the way. Secondly, if the National Assembly is truly reflective of society, parliamentary debate and its outcome will stand the test and best chance of being endorsed by the people. This means that men and women should have an equal say in the management of the country's future. Often, this point may require special action to ensure that women's chances of obtaining a position in parliament are enhanced and to guarantee that in parliament, responsibilities are shared equally between men and women. Unfortunately, in the Gambia, the composition of parliament is not balanced and leaves much to be desired at the moment. Moreover, an all-inclusive reconciliation process means that all sectors of society, particularly those most affected, have an opportunity to take part in the decision-making process. Now, on the specifics, parliamentarians in a democracy and post-dictatorship like ours in 27 have a very significant role to play in advancing reconciliation. The establishment of the Truth, Reconciliation and Reparation Commission, that is the TRRC in 2017, was a transitional justice mechanism enacted by the National Assembly, focusing on the investigation of patterns as well as specific instances of human rights abuses and violations committed between the period July 1995, sorry, 94 to January 2017. The commission operated in a victim-centered manner and concluded its work with a report <coughs> containing conclusions and recommendations. The TRRC had helped to establish the truth about the nature and scale of past violations of human rights and humanitarian law to serve as a guard against nationalist or revisionist accounts of the past. It has fostered 
accountability of perpetrators by collecting and preserving evidence and publicly identifying those rep responsible. The TRRC, in its detailed report, recommended victims' reparations, programs, and necessary legal and institutional reforms. It has also provided a public platform for victims to address the nation directly with their personal accounts <laughs> and serve as a catalyst for public debate on how to deal with the past and how to ensure a better future. The never again mantra. And this can cultivate, and in some instances, cultivated reconciliation and tolerance at the individual and national levels as witnessed in the TRRC proceedings. You will recall um, when some perpetrators and witnesses were confronted at the TRRC proceedings. Now, on constitutional and other legal reforms, the National Assembly plays a very crucial role in every step of such reform process. Precisely, the legislative power of the state is vested in the National Assembly by bills passed by the National Assembly and assented to by the president. This power is fundamental in every democratic state, especially in post-dictatorship regime, where usually the constitution and other laws may have been weakened in favor of the dictator, such as in our scenario where the 1997 constitution was butchered over 52 amendments and many draconian laws <coughs> enacted to support, abet, and sustain the Jame regime. It is against this backdrop that the new government in 2017 had the agenda to draft a constitution as well as promulgate progressive laws to accompany the transitional justice program of the state of a new Gambia. Effectively, the National Assembly passed three key <laughs> legislations that I may term as the bedrock of our constitutional and other legal reform processes. Notably, the National Human Rights Commission Act 2017, the Truth, Reconciliation, and Reparation Commission Act 2017, and the Constitutional Review <coughs> Commission Act, all of 2017. Fortunately, the TRRC and the NHRC respectively stood the test of time and worked well in unearthing the past human rights violations and instituted a preventive mechanism for future human rights violations. That is the National Human Rights Commission. But unfortunately, chief of the reform process, that is the Constitution Promulgation Bill 2020, could not sail through the National Assembly. Precisely, as we all know, going through the 1997 Constitution, a requirement of Section 226.2b of the Fifth Legislature of the National Assembly witnessed the tabling of the Constitution Promulgation Bill 2020. That is, in other words, the CERC draft constitution by the government in 2020. However, the bill stalled in the National Assembly at the second reading stage because it could not win the three quarters support of all members of the National Assembly as required by section 2262B of the 1997 constitution. Now, notwithstanding this setback, the government may decide to come back, or even on the private member's bill, to revive the process of 
promulgating a new constitution for our republic that the CRC worked so hard and diligently to produce as the basis of ushering a new constitutional order, as rightly stated by the Secretary General and party leader. Thus, the role of the National Assembly in getting us a new constitution is still fundamentally relevant and very necessary. Now, on the principles of transitional justice, it is the field that has developed as a response to this dilemma. The aim of transitional justice is to confront legacies of abuse in a broad and holistic manner, encompassing criminal, restorative, social, and economic justices. It recognizes that responsible justice policy must include measures that seek to, end, to achieve both accountability for past crimes and the prevention of new ones. It also recognizes that the demand for criminal justice is not absolute, but instead must be balanced with the need for peace, democracy, equitable development, and the rule of law. The widely held reality is that countries like the Gambia, recovering from periods of mass abuse, face the almost certain prospect of flawed justice. In a significant number of cases, transitional governments are effectively forced to choose between justice and the continuation of peace or justice and the maintenance of democracy. Even where such threats are less prominent, the massive scale of past abuses, the weaknesses of our laws, the adoption of amnesty laws, and severe limitation in relation to human and financial resources often make ordinary justice impossible. Invention and compromise become dual imperatives. This is where the government and the National Assembly found itself in 2017. Thus, the National Assembly had to enact the TRRC to set the ball rolling for an effective transitional justice system. Similarly, criminal legislations such as the criminal offenses and the criminal procedure bills were introduced to ensure a complete reform of our criminal legal system. I've been made to understand that these bills are at an advanced stage in the legislative process for enactment at the National Assembly. I stand to be corrected by the honorable members who are here, present with us here. I am equally aware that the National Assembly has passed the Prevention and Prohibition of Torture Act 2023. This is a milestone achievement in our efforts to promote human rights and uphold the rule of law in the country. The Act provides the legal framework for the prohibition, prevention, and punishment of any form of torture and other forms of cruel, inhumane, or degrading treatment in the Gambia and provide penalties aimed at ensuring accountability for acts of torture. But let us also be very mindful of the remarks by the Secretary General with regards to the prevalence of torture at the moment. Finally, I understand that the National Assembly will be convening an extraordinary session this month to consider and pass two prominent legislations aimed at furthering the transitional justice mechanism. I think it has already been gazetted. That is the enactment of a special prosecutor's office, one, and two, the enactment of a special accountability mechanism law, all to give finality to the TRRC report for justice and accountability. In conclusion, 
it is evident that these roles of parliament in our democratic state have highlighted the significance of parliament in our constitutional and legal reforms, as well as in our traditional justice process that we all fought for, especially Ibrahima Solo Sanding, who has been the sacrificial lamb in this process. Parliament must therefore not relent in its collective pursuit in furthering the transitional justice mechanism as per its legislative oversight and representative functions. This is the social contract for which they were all elected. And I thank you all for your kind attention. The Gambia is proud to host the 15th OIC Summit on the 4th and 5th May 2024, the second largest gathering of world leaders, kings, presidents, rulers, prime ministers, along with delegates from 57 member countries of the Organization of Islamic Cooperation, will gather in our beloved nation for this historic event. The theme of the summit is enhancing unity and solidarity through dialogue for sustainable development. It's a platform to foster cooperation, promote peace and drive sustainable development across the Ummah and the world at large. We call on all Gambians to unite and support the government as it strives to host a memorable and successful event. Let's showcase our hospitality, culture and the beauty of the Gambia to the world. Join us in making history. Let's stand together, united as one, to ensure the 15th OIC Summit in the Gambia is an event to remember. Together, we can make a difference. Islamic microfinance is becoming an increasingly popular mechanism for poverty alleviation, especially for developing countries around the world. This microfinance service adheres to the principles of Islam as a form of social responsibility. Yona Islamic microfinance is the Islamic microfinance of choice in the Gambia, trustworthy and reliable. At Yona Islamic microfinance, we provide savings products, current accounts, financing products in conformity with Islam. In addition, Yona Islamic Microfinance also offers local and international remittances, takaful fund, management of zakat, management of awqaf, trading and investment, and building of strategic partnerships to bring financial services to the doorstep of the poor with donor projects, madrasas, youth organizations, women groups, and farmer organizations. Make a choice with Yona Islamic Microfinance today. For more information on Yona Islamic Microfinance, call 377-2151 or 9832-151 or visit Yona Head Office at Tipa Garage, Bakote or visit any Yona branch located countrywide near you. Yeah, but you can contact battle. Bari inatal perukan nak bung bulu aku aje be. Itu kontan tali makura. Bari alai alon te mau kontan de. Makura ikan anjing aku ini ninte bel betu bawa dulu lah kilo motor. Motor ni arti kaya. Ngoko di bawah kat ngoki nanjang. Puri anak dulu ada dah. Nita ada anak dulu tu makura. Alai alon jusoh malah. Hah? Ama hari futa dulu tu dulu ding ding ding. Anu biri je loro aku masih wni biri ama. Ama hari me. No no ama me. Tonya alon. Ke? Bara fon ni mune mula kuloti. Tuk kulung balu waldi. Balu. Hah. Oui, il faut pas que tu te fasses. Il faut 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 que tu te fasses.